G'day, g'day, g'day! Hiding in the corner. In my landlake department. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, we've had a few a few <laughs> comment comments. Yeah, is, is that weird? We did one, but landlake is about to finish, which led to a question about age claim, which now led to other questions. So here we are back again. Right. Uh, more of the same, if you like. And before we start, Carleen, hello. Thank you for all your lovely comments and for supporting us. Hope you're doing well. Right. We'll get to your questions soon, Carleen. One of the questions we had was felt-tip pens. Yes, so yes. We have one here, a little sharpie. It's a fine point, and it, it's a very fine point. If you it's just a fine point, isn't it? Very, very fine point, yeah. We don't need a great deal because we only want a very fine line. That's all we actually need for a very fine line. And when we put the lead, in fact, I'll blacken the end of this as well. There we are. So we then put that against that. I wonder if you can see that. Good. Can you see that in the camera? I think so, I hope so. Yeah, it's just purely enough just to get that centre heart there. Right. That's all it is, just enough just to allow that stop thing from creeping. So a very fine point, I I bought me packs. Ready to right. go. Cheaper. Yep. Yeah, cool. That's what that is. That was one question. Another question was the different sizes of lead, you know. Yes, that's right. And uh, so um well look uh, I've got some sizes here. We've got some this this is this is very good thin. This is narrow heart, what we call narrow heart. This is very, very thin stuff, and this is for china cabinets. Okay. Very, very thin. But regardless of the size of the, of the lead, that part there will always be the same. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, so what happens is when you have your when you have your eight section like so. There's your eight section there. Yep. This part here will differ, but that part will always be the same. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have that's a, that's a narrow. Then we have a five mil. That's your five mil lead there, which I've just done a window in five mil actually, which is okay. It's a nice little beauty, isn't that? This one in five mil. Two. That's your five mil lead there. Right. So that one's just been done. That's where it's back to this new home. Uh, the problem with five mil is it's it's very it's very rounded and you have a lot of problems holding it in place. Six mil is flat and um, you can get six mil there as well. All right. I, I bought a case of five mil because it was on special. Yeah, so, um, and then we can go to <coughs> seven mil, which is we're getting bigger up now, aren't we? And this is seven mil. So the seven mil is, is is the measurement across the top, is it? That's right. It's always it's always there, yeah. Right, yeah, right. So that's a seven mil, and then. We go to 10 mil, right. which is bigger again. But you know, same thing again. You know, from the the, the center face is still the same. Set the just the same. Yeah, the, the, the heart. Hang on, hang on. I've got company. Yeah, little fella. Oh, oh, oh. Here we are. This is Nick. Hello, Nick. Yeah, Nick. You're a TV star now, buddy. This is Nick the cat. Yeah. Yes. It was going to get run over, so. He was following very social cat. He was following the kids on the road, so and they said you take it home and keep it safe. So Nick became part of the household. Not that he needed any more cats, but they might <laughs> they move <right>. on. <laughs> and if you want to go for a bigger and bigger lead, you can go up to 25, 30 mil lead. You can wow! Go really big. Um, when you get bigger leads for, for like uh, church windows and high impact with wind areas, you have um, <coughs> quite a large lead. Right and. That centre heart is really quite a large one. Right, so that alters then, does it? Yeah. Yeah, that one alters, and and the reason why that alters is because in here, once Nick is out of the way, come on, Nick, come on, come on, come on. There's a big hole there that goes right way through, and what that does, see, you can put a big stabilising bar right through the centre of that. Aha! That's what that's for. Okay. Right. But like you know, for, for, get a lot of strength, you know. Yep, yep, yep. And so you can get some big ones, but but your five, seven, and ten, they're the case you want. So ten's mostly for your border. 
and how, how we discussed before how how you can you can nail through there yep well that, that's what that's for and you can plane that off right. that's what that is all right right, right. now stabilizing bars you can put them on now, now the stabilizing bars are what we're going to try next so what I have here is you're going to sit there, Munich. You've got to sit right there, have you? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Love it, I. Right. And this is, this is see, look, it's just, it's, it's dropped the bits, all right? These were taken out because they're very, it's amber glass. It's very dark, you know? Very gloomy. So this was taken out and, um, and they're putting just some, some clear obscure glass. So these okay. are going to go in the bin. But all the glaziers, um, you've got to go down here. What a good idea, the other fella. What a perfect idea. So the glazer gives it, it to me because I can often use the glass. You know. Right. So the glazer gives it to me. So we'll, we'll do a couple here. What you do, if it's dirty like that, you've got to scrape it clean. You can't, you can't sew it over dirt. What do you do with them, eh? Right. You simply kind of sew it over dirt. The solder just won't stick to it, will it? It will not stick to it, man. Yeah. So then we get our flush brush, and you, you go right along the whole thing, of course, you know. Um, yep. Often with diamonds, what you can do, of course, is um, go that way and hide the fact there's even the bar there. You're rather go right through the guts, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can get a really hard hard plastic, clear plastic, which would, which does the same thing as well. That's going to be a steel bar. So with diamonds, I tend to do that. Okay. That's what I tend to do. Right. Which we get our flux. Put a drop on there, just a little bit, not a great deal. There we are. That's our flux in place. Doesn't a great deal. That's the flux I use. I find that the best. Right. Okay, simple as that. Regular soldering paste, eh? Yeah. Made the good old USA, and I find that one. And what I do, I get off cuts of, of, of wiring from, uh, from the local electrician, and he, um, he gives me all these bits and pieces. Because they're all good to him, and um, I take the plastic off so that we have um, some nice some copper wire, like so. Keep them fairly long if you can, and we'll just drop them in place like that. Right. And then we'll get our soldering. Now, I, um, where they use gas, electric or whatever you have to use, it's all, it's all the same, it's just a question of heat. So, on. All right. The original one wore out. This was a present for my sister. So this just heats up the, the it, tip. It's the tip, yeah. It wouldn't take very long at all, would it? No, no, no. You can test it with your tongue, John. Alright! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to do. Yeah, let's see what it is. Uh, I use 60 port of solder. It's a 60 port. So it's a 60 red, 40 tin. Right. And you can buy it like that, can't you? Yeah, yeah, buy the 60 port. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can buy foil, but these should be also a lot better. Go to the temperature, but there we go. We're there already. So, um, Right, you just put a little drop on there, screw it over, a bit more. And that's it, it's done. Right. right, so all this here, see it? When the solar lands on the glass like that, it's simply just, just, and you can do the top of this. It's sort of one sick glass, you see. Right. Since you lose one sick glass. But you don't, you don't want to waste it, though, do you? No, of course not. Right, so you, know, you just pick it up, pick it up. You got it on there. And there's your joint on. Right. And then, you put, you, then you put your bar across, whether it's diagonal or horizontal or whatever. So, hold the close. Take the solder, and she goes. That's it. 
Ja. Ja. And then, that just goes, that just sits in there. So this is your bar, your bar goes over. Yeah. And you, you get your, your wires. <clears throat> and you just simply twist them round. Just a minute, little fellow wants to back up again. There we go. Yeah, Nick. Twist them round, like so. And just fold them flat. Right, and that's it. And that's it. And that'll strengthen the whole thing up and... Um, and of course these go into a hole in your frame either side. So um, right. what you do is on your on your frame, you you cut one, you, you, you know you don't, you, you drill one hole larger than the other, so it goes in and then back. Right. So one's deeper than the other side. Okay. And that's how you get that done. Right. So there, there might be someone here, is there? Yeah, someone asked about, what, it, what was it putting the... Putting the glass or the or the lead light into a frame was it? That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we have. You can have these little things here, and these are. You just buy these in, in, in packs from from any. Well, there, there we are. And these are little things. I put them out there. Eh? These are these are called push punts. Little push points. We'll get we'll get our lead light back as Mr. Lead Light back on the back. Alright. And once that's in the frame, these little things here, they've got a, a flat edge on them. Like two little two little um cutouts and you slide that against the frame with your knife and you just push it into the frame like so. Right. And that holds it in place. Then you put it over it. That's one way of doing it. You do the same thing with, with blazing tacks, which is exactly the principle. Or you can have little panel pins, look. These are them here. Right, little tiny baby nails. And we get our little pin hammer, which is not where it should be. When you're glazing into a, a window frame, you don't put putty on first. You, you know, you, this is you glaze me outside. You you push it down because what happens is with your lead light. As you're pushing it in, everything twists and buckles and moves around because of the lead. You see, right. there's a good chance you're going to snap with your pieces putting it in. Right. So you don't put putty on on the on, a, in, on the an in, inside job. On the inside. So then you, you push it in like so. Then then you whether you're using timber beads or little glaze and tacks. You have these little fellows here, your little tiny pin hammer, and whenever the two leads join, yes, we start there. You start there, you see, and see that you turn it round. Yeah. That fits between your thumb, your fingers. You see. Right. So, so what happens is, you put that down like so. That fits there. Once you've started, you turn it round, and then again. That's how that works. That's what that's for. You see. Okay. Right. Right, right. That's a little pin hammer. That's a marvellous little toy. So you can go that way. You can go for your push tacks, which, which uh, these are these marvellous little things. You actually, right? And that just simply goes into there, and you just cut your, your knife and you just push it the frame, right? And, and that's that, that, put it on or bead, same thing. Yeah, put it over the top. Yeah. yeah, and that's how that works. Simple as that. Yeah, but if it was an outside window where you wanted to seal it, well, then, then you put put it, then, then you, you put, put putty on. Oh. And then your glass, and then putty again. And no, no, outside you still on your, the putty's never on the inside with lead lights. You, okay. You, you always put them in dry, and then you then you you seal them. So all the sealing stuff from you do all the sealing from the weather side. From from the outside. Okay. Oh right. So that's how that works. Yeah. That's just part of my anti wrinkle cream. Maybe a you know, case. Right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think the other cubby doesn't work. All right. Oh, that's cool! Really so that's cool. That, so no. I think that's all the questions asked. Well, there's one, answer, isn't it? There was one question regarding polishing oil. Oh yes. That we used. Um, well, we always used use boil rather than raw, and the reason for that is because um, raw linseed oil won't dry, but boiled will. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's. So what this we used. this was a question about the polishing, but the polishing oil. oil. Not so much the red lights, the polishing oil. Yeah. And was the polishing oil linseed oil? Yeah, linseed yeah. oil. It is, but it's boiled, not raw. Right. Okay. okay. So that's what that is. So I think that's about covers everything. So that's your 
that's your pen, that's your glazing, that's your lead sizes, yep. 60 40 solder. I think we've covered more things there, haven't we? Any more questions I, I can think of? I, I can't think of anything now. No, I can't think of either. No. Yeah, mm. but uh, it's good to, have, good to have the questions coming in. And yes, the comments. Well, to everybody, happy lead lighting. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes, keep it going. Um, yeah, we hope everybody's <laughs> safe in this, in this, this crazy time. It is, isn't it? With the COVID, and then of course our friends the Russians having to go. It's all happening now. Yes. Um, yeah. And, Scary stuff, isn't it? And Nicky stole my seat. Right. And Nikki... <laughs> Poor baby, isn't it? Yeah. Look, Nicky stole my. He stole my seat, Nicky. You're real cute, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's the. So, so that's what that is. Very good, sir. Well, thank you very much. And. Uh... And somebody asked a question about cutting lead. We should, we should cover that. When you're cutting lead, they were saying that the end of their lead, they crush it all the time, they crush the end of the lead. Well, um, that's because if, if you're cutting to it, whatever it happens to be, whether you have a that type of principle, let's open one of the drawers, or whatever you have to use, you know. Um, I've got some big ones, but some small ones. And what I tend to do with them all is keep them sharp. You've got to keep your gear, it's, it's a cutting tool that's got to be sharp. So whatever you're using, it's, if it's not sharp, it's just going to squash it. It's it? going to squash it, yeah. So there's a little one that I made out of a scraper, a little one there I made up, you know. Right, and, right. And whatever it is, it's just got to be sharp. And so I have, um, I have a sharpening stone. No, I fucking don't. I have a sharp. Anyone, anyone doesn't really matter. Make sure it's sharp. All right, run across the file, sandpaper, whatever you want to do, and just. Get right on top of it. All right. Just like that. And then yeah. If if you just slightly crush like that one there, just pop it back out. Okay. Or if you have one of these things, these just roll, you see? Roll. Right. Same thing, but they've got to be sharp. Yep. If they're not sharp, you'll just simply crush it. It makes it makes life hard, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and you can't work with it with blunt. You've got to keep on untwisting it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't work with blunt tools. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So you need, but that's keep your gear sharp, and you're fine. Right. That'll solve your crushing issues. Yeah. Very good. Very good. If, you, if you're quite weak in the wrist and you can't do that, just simply hold it over the top and just tap it with a hammer. It goes right. straight through. Yep. Well done, well done, thank you. Yeah. So there we go. So till next time. Till next time. And if I can do this, so can you. Cool bananas, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it.